How's it going, everybody? Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Super 7 Ultimates Power Rangers Green Ma Oh. How's it going, everybody? Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Super 7 Ultimates Power Rangers Wave 1 Green Ranger and Yellow Ranger. I want to give a big thank you to Super 7. They sent over the entire first wave of the MMPR Ultimates for an early review. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the toy content here on the channel. Now, let's open these toys. What we're going to do today is we're going to unbox both of the Power Rangers, look at the accessories, and once I have them both, we can compare them in terms of articulation, paint, sculpt, look at it together at the same time. Then we can swap on their accessories, do some comparisons, and then see what these toys are all about. So we're going to open both figures today at the same time because I think it would be cool to see both of them side by side. You have the female buck and the male buck. Uh, the bodies for the figures on here and we can kind of see how they look together You know you kind of get a sense of uh, how the team will shape up once you have them all together uh, If you've never opened ultimates before there's a brown shipper box then you take this bad boy out He's got the beautiful graphics the power coins are gold embossed on the front of the slip cover And also if you could please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel turn on the notification bell because you don't want to miss when the reviews for the rest of this wave go up, I would really appreciate that. Now through the power of the morphing grid, let's get this thing open. All right, so this figure comes with a lot of stuff. And the reason I did that unboxing is because this is a second take. Uh, the first take that I took, took that I take that I took, I forgot to hit record. But uh, the Yellow Ranger comes with one, two, three, four, five, six pairs of hands so that you can get her into uh, all the different poses when they're doing the group photo and all these things when the villains could be attacking them and when they're calling for their zords. So there's hands for all of those. There's hands for holding and fighting. And I've chatted with my friend Kyle Wadiga, who is the lead designer on Power Rangers. And uh, it comes with both head sculpts. If there's a ranger with two different actors or two different characters, uh, they want to have both available so you don't have to buy the figure twice to get both characters and you know being titled ultimates uh, i think they feel like you know it it should be included in there so you have the portraits for the two different yellow rangers you have the figure itself uh it comes with a lot of accessories and on a previous video i did with kyle we went when these were first announced we went through all the different accessories i don't remember all of it now i'm sorry but i'm sure there are uh power rangers fans with better memories who can tell me in the chat where where these came from so you have three blade blasters one for each form that the blade blasters can take which is incredible because you can get them all at once uh and the cool part is there's actually detail here on the side of the blade blasters that says power rangers like it's a clearly written word my camera can't even zoom in that closely you can just look like this and you can see it says power rangers on there it's it's incredible detail and it's cool to get all three even the sword uh formation configuration all in the same set you get the daggers you get two daggers uh, it's got this bright shiny silver on the top sculpted uh, details in the blade sculpted details in the blade also and the coin the emblem in the middle is painted silver and looks like there's a little bit of detail in there as well a very faint saber tooth uh, face in there and they're pretty pointy so you know be careful it's a little bit thinner at the front so also be careful for that reason as well you have a standalone morpher which is so cool to finally get an accessory like this. Uh, it's got the handle on the back so they can they can hold it with, with this hand, I guess. Um, it actually says Power Rangers on the, the font is like microscopic, but it actually says Power Rangers over the top and bottom, clear, clearly, if you can get close enough. The only downside is we don't have civilian Power Rangers anywhere. So it, it's great that this is included in, absolutely, but your ranger would not be holding it. But again, accessories that come with it, not gonna complain. Um, you have the power coin that extends to the ice cream cone popsicle thing that they use to start up their zords and pilot, like some sort of shifter. And it's got uh, some detail for the saber tooth tiger on the top of the coin. And of course, if you're not familiar with Super 7 Ultimates, a lot of their lines are inspired by the toys that we played with as kids much like the TMNT Ultimates or Thundercats. 
Um, they are, they're almost like the original toys, but beefed up uh, given modern day, modern day upgrades, even if the TMNT stuff, if uh, there's fans out there know that the Super 7 Ultimates recreated the sprue with all the weapons on it, like you would get back in the day with the original Playmates TMNT toys. So continue along with that aesthetic of toys on your shelf. Uh, these Power Rangers come with the Blade Blaster and daggers done in the old style. I mean, how cool is that to include it in there if you want to, if you want to put these in your rangers if you want to have them look that way or if you just want to have them on the side it's cool to have new accessories again i don't remember exactly where these came from if you remember which episode these were from let me know in the comments but of course a little gnome here and uh the flowers and you can use this across any line if you do toy photography you can swap them out it's always cool to get more accessories so that's the accessories for the yellow ranger now when it comes to the green ranger tommy oliver uh Obviously, rest in peace to Jason David Frank, who played Tommy Oliver many, many seasons of Power Rangers and an icon and definitely somebody who a lot of kids, you know, grew up watching and even idolized. So it's cool to get the Green Ranger here and get some head sculpts of Tommy Oliver. Uh, again, we're going to take a look at all the accessories, everything it comes with, and then compare uh, the, the male body here, the female body. Of action figures and the accessories and everything afterwards so uh, so we can take a look quickly he actually comes with two trays much like the yellow ranger toy there are some pieces here that are inspired by ori the original toy release so, so I'm gonna start by removing some of the clips on the head sculpt He looks good. He looks very good. Okay, so Tommy comes with three pairs of hands in the second tray. Plus you have the fists that come on the figure. Plus you have a pair of hands that go on the swappable arms for a total of five pairs of hands. We have the toy version, much like the Yellow Ranger, we have the toy version for uh, yellow, the Green Ranger here, the 90s Blade Blaster in all white plastic, the 90s, um, 90s style Dragon Dagger that's just all silver. It looks a little stubby here. Uh, I'll do a side. I'll do a side by side real quick of the actual sculpted uh, dragon dagger, and that's just a fun accessory to have to go with it. So that's more of the uh, callback to the old toy accessories. Uh, and we're not done yet because it also comes with a vac metal gold dragon shield, which you can actually put on this figure and give it the old toy look. Uh, super cool to be included into into the set we have this sword here sort of omens sort of darkness sort of power uh let me know in the comments first one to accurately get it wins uh bonus points and my respect the sword of darkness which is this awesome looking blade and somehow not the green ranger's coolest weapon uh is included here it's got a shiny silver uh finish on it some sculpted detail in the handle and of course a real rope dangly dangle this heat gun which looks like they took some power tool and made it into a prop for the show uh it's a heat heat gun i think um yeah someone in the comment will correct me for sure and of course the dragon dagger the most powerful flute in the universe but can only play two songs the dragon dagger uh you have details for all of the buttons is it a button on a flute some flautists are gonna get mad if i call it the wrong part we have the dragon dragon coin emblem here on the dagger uh the paint on this it's nice and, and clean and uh it, this is a great accessory it goes into his sheath here on the side of the green ranger uh and again i mentioned the extra arms earlier there is an episode where tommy transfers the powers of the dragon shield to jason and when that happens the shield itself can com comes off but also the gold bands that are on his bicep 
also are part of the look, so it disappears. So Super 7 has gone ahead and given you these arms in case you want that look, that very specific look. I think it only happened a handful of times, maybe two times. Crazy and appreciated that it's put in there. I personally wasn't like, oh, Tommy better come with this, but it's cool that it's in here. That's just attention to detail and I like that. And this is uh, the Green Ranger. Finally, we have the two Tommy head sculpts. We have the regular Tommy Oliver version with the ponytail as you first see him. And we have the evil version of Tommy with the uh, bags under his eyes. I love the green bandana look and a very faint dab of paint on his left ear. You can see his earring. So while I have these heads in my hands, we're gonna talk about the look of these portraits, all right? So I've mentioned, you know, Super 7 draws inspiration from the toy look of things. You can see they have the toy versions of the daggers, the weapons, the, um, the vac metal shield like the originals, uh, and the Ninja Turtles have the have the sprue with all the weapons. So like with Team NT, with Thundercats, it's supposed to look like it can gel on the same display like they're all toys. Now these heads as toy versions of Tommy Oliver are passable. If I just looked at them like this, I'm like, oh, okay, all right. And it might be one of those cases where the sculpt is there, but maybe it's lacking a little detail on the paint. Um, to really give it that special look but where it definitely lacks is the fact that these fall short of the digital renders that were originally used those had more detail definitely more defined and maybe maybe something that super 7 isn't really known for like everything is supposed to be toyetic i personally don't go for super 7 because i know they have the most realistic representations of the actors and head sculpts. I know I buy Super 7 uh, Turtles because they remind me of the toys. So in one sense, yeah, these aren't the most accurate. And of course, with the passing of, of JDF, we want something that's even more accurate to remember the person by. On its own, if you didn't know what the renders look like, these are passable. But the fact that the renders came out first and these fall short of that, um, I these are lacking. Personally, myself going into this, I am not expecting the same articulation and range of motion as say a SH Figure Arts Power Rangers or a Lightning Collection figure. That's just not what Super 7 is about. Um, for, for the company, it's always looks and aesthetics first. They try to minimize on cuts and breakage in the form factor of the figure. Uh, they value that more than being hyper articulated. You know, they don't do double elbows, they don't do double jointed knees, uh, and feel like those ranges in these single elbows are sufficient. I know what to expect going into this. Uh, I'm not looking for, I'm not buying a minivan and expecting a race car. And I'm not expecting it to perform like a race car. Like I know what I'm getting into. Will I get mad? Will I be surprised? No because that's the expectation. I'm not going in this thinking it's something else. And, and that's not a judgment on anyone. I have, I have friends who are articulation junkies and it has to be double jointed everything. It has to be this and that, and I get it. I get it, everyone has their toys in a different way. If you want these to look awesome on your shelf, or if you want these to be hyper uh, posable and do toy photography and super dynamic poses, um, you know, uh, just know what you're going into. Let's continue with articulation. This is my first time handling Power Rangers from Super 7. I'm going to be cautious and use a hair dryer to warm up some stuff. There's not much of a side to side here. We can take a look at the ball joint after when we do the head swap, but it looks down. It looks up well enough that you can get some really nice like stare down poses from, from Evil Green Ranger. So I like that. Uh, the arms. These arms actually come out, so we'll figure out how all of that um, comes out later. But the difference with this is the uh, male body does not have the diaphragm rotation at the top. It has a straight ab crunch here. And along with the ab crunch that you can see here, there's also the ball joint behind the belt so that it has combo crunching ability. Um, so this is as far as that goes. 
and that far back, Zordon! I'll get you, Power Rangers. The shoulders look the same as the female ones. Uh, the proportions are a little bit beefier. The Green Ranger does have the gold band on his bicep, but there is still that bicep swivel there hidden perfectly at the top of that band, which is awesome. The uh, bare arms, Toronto man's bare arms also have the bicep swivel here. Yeah, the shoulders on mine are really tight. And I'm gonna get some shock oil to get in there. Uh, I would recommend that or some heat from a hair dryer when you get yours, if you get yours. But what we have here, that already looks like an awesome Power Ranger pose. Um, of course, there is the swivel. That ball joint there does allow for it to swivel. And I'm assuming much like the female body uh, Power Ranger, this dude is not kicking that much. So forward. Out. Back. This also has a single jointed knee and of course the boot swivel at the top of the boot. Ooh. Again, don't force anything. The boot swivel here at the top of the boot. Ankles. Oh, I forgot about Tommy's morpher too. Tommy has the gold morpher just like on the show, so that's awesome. All right, so we're gonna figure out how to take uh, some of these parts off. In order to take off the dragon shield, we're gonna take off the head first. And that's just a simple uh, ball peg on top on a disc. And it actually has a lot of range, but because of how I think deep it goes into the helmet that it kind of restricts it. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna hold on to the shoulder part of this. I saw MCU Collector do it on his review, so I'm gonna go take his advice. Hold high up on the shoulder and give it a good yoink. There you go. Oh, thank God it came out with no issues. Uh, I wanna make sure there's no paint sticking in this range here, but this peg feels really solid, so I'm happy about that. And once you have one arm off, you can kind of slip it off there. It might be easier to grab the other arm. All right, Jesus. This one's a little bit tighter on the right arm, but again, a little heat just to be safe. Make sure you try to grip the shoulder as hard as much as possible when you're trying to take those out. And then of course, uh, you can just pop these bad boys in. I personally don't feel the need to do that, but of course I just wanted to show you. Uh, and then we can just put the dragon shield on like this while we're at this point. The uh, we can put on the back metal dragon shield on at this point since we have it. And it's pretty tight fit there. It just slips on top. You can put the Green Ranger helmet back on. It's a little loose, but I think that's how the old toy was back in the day with the back metal too. Uh, that's not how I'm gonna be displaying it for myself, so that's coming off, but there is that option for you. Now let's put this back on, and I'm gonna put on the unmasked heads. Oh, put these back in, they snap really easily. It's just getting them out was difficult. So again, it's not a saw, it's not like 100% JDF. You know what they're going for. It looks like the sculpt is there. It looks like with the help of extra paint, you could get a realistic Tommy Oliver. As it stands, this is like an action figure Tommy Oliver. But again, I agree. If, if you wanted what was shown in the renders, um, this is definitely missing some of the shading and the colors that the 3D renders had. evil yo this okay okay this may okay if you didn't have the renders and i get it you're, you're being shown one thing and you get something different but if you didn't have those renders and it was just this tommy oliver <laughs> as an evil ranger that looks good like now that i have it on i'm i'm i like it i, I like this look this evil one looks pretty sick like it's got the the green eyes with the black shadow like it it looks it looks pretty good um 
Yeah, no, you know what? If if you don't like it because it's not like the renders, I feel you. I'm not dismissing your opinion, but this on its own, this is a pretty cool, cool head sculpt. So the cool thing about Tommy is he does come with the flute playing hands, so he can uh, summon the Dragon Zord, and I believe the Dragon Zord is going to be in a future wave. I think it was announced. That'd be cool. It's got the up down rocker on this uh, shocker hand. Bend the elbow up. Now this is what I'm curious about because it doesn't have the double jointed elbows or butterfly shoulders. Does this allow him to flout? How do you play a flute with the motorcycle helmet on? I don't know. It's actually got one finger there that lifts up. Um, yeah, and it's it doesn't really reach. Yeah, I mean you can kind of, if you want to use some force perspective, it looks like he's playing it, but it doesn't reach his mouth. You know, I was hopeful. I was hopeful, but I didn't think it could be done without double jointed elbows, without maybe a butterfly joint uh, here at the pectoral, pectoral area. I was hopeful. Um, it's not a deal breaker for me, if, but I understand like if some people want to display it in that look, hopefully from this video you can see that it's not going to be uh, right up to his mouth when he's playing the flute. I'm going to take that hand off because I'm going to display him holding the Sword of Omens anyway. This is like the most gangster pose that you can do with someone wielding a sword. And uh, even though you don't have 90 elbows, 90 degree el or double jointed elbows, like this, I can rock with this. So yeah, she's not going to be doing, none of them are really going to be doing any crazy kicks. But like if you want them to call out to their zords, I need... I need dinosaur power, I need megazord power, that kind of stuff, the group photos, um, it's, it'll definitely look good. It's got a beautifully sculpted helmet, it's got a little bit more sheen than the rest of the body, kind of giving that motorcycle helmet uh, vibe. The shiny silver details on the fangs and the mouthpiece, uh, there's your range, you want to see the up down, this is up, down, side to side obviously works really well. We have a upper diaphragm rotation, so let's see. Woo. Back, forward. This is what I mean about uh, looks over articulation. I knew there was a hidden joint here for the uh, ab behind the belt, so they'll put that. They'll put stuff like that in there because it doesn't really break the form of the figure. So not only is there the diaphragm joint up here that gives you this right you can combine that with the lower crunch it's a, i think it's on a ball joint inside and then now you're getting a bit of a deeper ab crunch right now you can combine those two together combo bend uh shoulders they come out this much there's the joint in there single jointed elbows gives you Close to 90 degree, just over 90, 91 degree range, right? And that rotates in there as well. Doesn't further turn at the glove, which is at the base of the glove, which is fine. The diamonds here on the gloves are, the paint on these are clean. The corners are sharp, the sides are sharp. You also have the bicep swivel. See how high she can kick. The legs can go out. They go forward. This is. This is as far forward as I'm comfortable with moving it. So the kick itself is not that high. Single jointed knee as mentioned, bends this much. And then of course there's the boot swivel hidden right at the top of the boot here. That's a nice addition. That's a nice point of articulation there. Uh, and the ankles, what the ankles do, up down and side to side. So you can still get some good um <laughs> group photo poses but this is not going to do any high kicks so for trini i'm going to go with this pose here and then for tommy i'm going to go with this side by side these are great looking rangers uh again it depends on what you want to do with your collection how you want to pose them here is a side by side of green ranger and goldar together Let's not forget the head swap for Trini as well, RIP. And uh, 
I think this is the best unmasked head sculpt that they have at the moment. This might be my favorite one. It looks, it looks a lot of fun. Hopefully after watching this video, you can decide how you feel about these figures. Let me know in the comments below. Personally, uh, I, I know what I was looking for when these were announced. I know they're not gonna match up with the articulation that imports offer or even Lightning Collection offers. But just looking at this as is, this is a beautifully sculpted and painted Green Ranger figure. The Yellow Ranger, look at that bright yellow that pops. The paint is clean, like paint applications are solid on these. I do look forward to having a complete set of these and also the Zords. Uh, if you can have a Green Ranger, Green Ranger partnered with Goldar, I think it's dope. Uh, but I do understand, I do understand people people's concerns with the Tommy head sculpts and the realistic human head sculpts because of how different they are in comparison to the renders but like honestly when I when I put the evil ranger head on Tommy like that that was the first time I did that and I genuine I genuinely thought it looked good with the evil Tommy head on the green ranger body uh you know this information is here for you to make a choice, make a decision, and maybe it's different for you uh, once you get in at hand. But again, I want to thank Super 7 so much for sending Wave 1 over. I already have the video for the T-Rex Dinosaur up. I did these two today. Uh, make sure you subscribe with notifications on so you can see when the Goldar and the Putty videos come out and future releases and unboxing Thursdays every week. Thank you so much for watching and keep touring around. Peace.